Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name's Andy, Corporate Commander, TFW, and I'm joined on the intellectual, emotional council within the villainous head. It's Mikey G. Wolf V3. Hello, Mikey. I am Chairman Mikey. No, you do not get the honor of having that <laughs> tiny mustache. <laughs> I want the mustache. No. The other options are too happy or glasses. You are glasses. Oh, she's... I suppose she does. She she does get the best holiday. I suppose she's practical. <laughs> <laughs> she's very practical. <laughs> Too practical. I would ironically be the happy one. For yeah. Irony's sake. <laughs> yeah, there would be a lot of irony. <laughs> yes. Then who? Uh, how's it going this week, Mister Mikey? Who would be chairman? What's that? Who, who would be, be chairman? chairman? Yeah. No one gets that honor. <laughs> the seat is left blank. <laughs> yeah, it's it's to be filled by one day when a when a powerful person comes to take the throne and the tiny mustache. Are you talking about Adam's child? Uh, no, he I've, rises we, we... up with a tiny mustache. I I've suggested to to <laughs> Gruff and his wife that they should be getting tiny mustaches and beards to stick on their child <laughs> at this stage of their life to ruin them for the future, but they have yet to do it, which I think is the greatest crime of all. I mean, it's very neglectful. I would have thought so. I mean, that child's going to have enough problems, you know, with his genetics. Mm. And now he doesn't have a tiny mustache. Or beard. Or beard. Yeah. Or, or monocle. Fedora. Fedora. Yeah, or fedora, yeah. Oh, yeah. little top hat, and you can do the whole look. A bouffant. <gasps> yes. Yeah, you could give him a Johnny Bravo hairstyle and shades. Oh my god, yes. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. Johnny Bravo baby. That's right. Baby yep. Bravo. Yep. <gasps> oh, man. Yes. They're doing parenting wrong, but you know, that's why I think about all parents who have a child and don't <laughs> add beards and other accessories to the child's face for no apparent reason, but just to amuse themselves. Yeah. But then uh, again, I'm not a parent, so. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going this week, Mr. Mikey? You being good? I'm all right, sir. How are you? I'm fine. I was going to ask if you'd made Santa sad this week by being a naughty little boy. I'm not sure how to take this one. Well, hopefully you've been a good boy. That's what I'm hoping. That, uh, that th- almost sounds worse. <laughs> I oh. hope you've been a good boy. <laughs> You'll get some sweeties. Sweeties, children? I have a candy cane sweeties. for you. People rag on the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> but do people rag on rat catchers? No. <laughs> Are they the same profession? <laughs> I think so. Where's right. the respect for the ha- the simple child catcher? That was my question. Before he came to town, children were filling the canals. They were blocking sewer systems everywhere. You couldn't, you couldn't get down those canals. The boats were trapped, wedged by children. Yeah, you were wading through puddles of children. <laughs> child catcher comes in, city cleans up. No one's on the streets mm. at all. No, that is true. Mm-hmm. Cleaned up the city. He provided a civil service, that man, even if he did have a slightly strange nose. But let's not judge him on his appearance, shall we? Anyway, Transformers news this week. Mikey, we have like, what, three or four stories? Is that right? Four-ish. And I would say like four-ish. Four- <laughs> yes, because it is slightly a rehash and Mikey just wants to have fun and laugh yes. uh, for the story. But uh, we're going to kick off with third-party news with another um, rendition of... The Reflector Crew, all three Reflectors, G1 style, and there's the Toy style as well. These ones coming from New Age. They are the NAH22 Chimera. Um, Though I see no lion heads, no snakes, and no goats. Pretty bad Chimera, if you ask moi. Mm. Um, They're Legend Scale size Reflectors, if you're interested. Uh, I I think that means Legend Scale within their own line because they have like uh, yeah. them standing next to a thundercracker and i think it's their thundercracker the new age one right mm. and he's col- he, like he's officially legend scale but he's he's more of the deluxe yeah is he okay i can't remember how big he a was a lot to be well honest. a lot of the i've noticed the legend scale is slowly becoming a lot more nebulous that's interesting i wonder if the the legend scale is becoming more nebulous just to include because there, maybe there isn't a term that they can use for deluxe legally. Yeah. 
I mean, that's a stretch, I grant well, you. But... Yeah. <laughs> and, like, legend, legend scale isn't really a term. An official legal term. It's kind of just one we've been pushing for years. No, it, yeah, it was... It, I'm sure... It, no, it was the name that they used to give that scale. It was Scout, then it was Legends? Or yeah, was it Legends but, and Scout? Um, but, like, it was dropped. The, the, the third party has never used it officially. No, until, I guess, within the last few years, at least, something like that. Mm. Uh, there's also the NH20, uh, yeah, the NAH22T uh, Translucent Chimera, uh, and the NAH22D Rear Window Color Images. Uh, so the translucent one is exactly what you would think. It's the G1 version, but gummy, I was going to say gummy berry juice flavored, uh, but that's not, <laughs> that's not true. It's a uh, gummy bear looking uh. version. Uh, and then the rear window v- uh, uh, one is not uh, based on the movie, uh, but based on the old toy. So you got Viewfinder Spectrum, Spectrum, Spectro, Viewfinder Spectro, and Spectro, that's it. the other one, Buttonhead. Spec- <laughs> yes, Buttonhead. Buttonhead. Cadbury's Buttonhead. <laughs> I always remember uh, the G one toy. One of them had it. Uh, the the button was his head. It's like, yeah. Oh, well, like. They're doing it oh, here no. as well, except for the base. The base figure, it's he's got two buttons. <laughs> oh no, he has two heads now. Stop um, pressing us. We don't work. Yeah, I yeah, I see what you mean. Oh no, I guess that means the heads can't fall away. That's a bummer. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we have images of of all nine figures, I guess. Mm. Uh, so Mikey, what would you think? Um, because I I kind of like reflectors. Yeah. I think the idea of reflectors kind of neat. I, I, uh, yeah, historically a hit and miss for me, but in terms um, of what would you do? You mean col- in terms of uh, figures in general? Yeah, like for instance, I really don't like the cartoon colors of Reflector. Um, so I've always been more into the the toy colors. So the fact that if you're going mass retail, your only options have ever been the you know the purple and the green just never really done it for me. Um. These guys look decent. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I since I am more into the toys for this character, the toy colored version of this is be- just looks better to me. Um, particularly since it comes with a flashlight to cover up at least one of the heads. <laughs> um, and I, I I like the colors. I have always liked the colors on the lads. And like we've got one you un- no, you've got three unique head sculpts on them. Yeah, I think that's really nice. That's mm. great. Give them a bit of personality. The transformation looks odd. I mean, by the looks of it, they sort of sit down and you unfold a backpack to make the front of a camera. Yeah, there's probably a bit more to it, but I I, I imagine that the back of the camera mode probably looks a bit on the messy side. But this mm. is legend scale, so I, gu- I guess you've yeah. got to give them a bit of slack. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see how losable the teeny tiny camera that Thundercracker is holding. Is. Oh no! Yeah, I that. Bet, oh no! I bet. I bet there ain't going to be many of them held on to for long. I'm gonna say it's less likely that they're lost versus the. Um, do you remember the world's smallest sound wave uh, ravage figure? Oh yeah. Not only was it tiny, but it was a wafer thin as well. Wafer thin. You could breathe that in, and it would vanish. <laughs> many had. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some use cocaine. Some use ravager discs. What's your pleasure? <laughs> Um. Yeah, and yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah. I'm not crazy about the translucent one. Uh, we we never are, to be fair. No, it's never for us. I just don't like how it looks. No. Um. I mean, what's your like as you as someone who kind of sort of likes reflector? Yeah. Um. I I like it. I I the fact that they gave them three distinct head molds, uh, is I think very important. Uh, granted, the center one is just kind of a neutral face. Mm. Um, I, I guess that makes sense because he has the circle on his uh, on his belly button, uh, so that's his personality trait. Uh, mm. Having a scared one <laughs> and a slightly smug one is is mm. good. Um, a bit more personality with the weapons might have been nice, but mm. overall, I, I think it's a great little set. It's it's almost one of those things where you could get both the um, the the standard reflector and the other reflector, and you'd have six separate characters, which is kind of nice. Yeah, and they'd have more of a distinct look than it's. It's like 
the 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 animation accurate reflector to me feels like Starscream Thundercracker Skywarp, mm. and uh, these three uh, the toy versions almost kind of give me the vibe of uh, Thrusturge and Ramjet. You know, mm. similar but different, but still yeah. still the the bit, seekers bit bit more unique. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Just because they've got a bit more flair to them, they've got unique head sculpts and a little bit more zazz zazzleness to them. Mm. I'm not saying you should go out and get both of them because the third party figure, so they'll the the legend scale, so they'll be cheaper, but they'll still be expensive. Yeah. Uh, to a point, but yeah, I I like them, and I'm I'm no stickler for um, legend scale figures. Uh, yeah. What were the what were the last reflectors that came out? They were sa- oh. they were siege ones, weren't they? Yeah, the ones that turned into a satellite, and then. If you had three, you could make a ca- yeah satellite. You could make a camera out of. But they had a toy accurate um, box set, which I wanted to pick up, but I could never find for a price I liked. Well, here's a question: What do you think of these versus them? Uh, granted, uh, different scale, and obviously yeah, it's third party versus kind of, first party. That's kind but... of it. I I like I like um yeah, because they came in about the same accessories as well. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I that stupid satellite mode was junk. But you, I mean, we understand why it was there. Yeah, it, it kind it kind of had to be. Yeah, but it remained junk. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say probably I'd rather have the deluxes. Really? Okay. Um, but I do like the camera mode for this a lot. It, yeah, it's 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 a much more solid camera least, mode. You can tell this we, was what, what that was designed it. for. <laughs> what we see of it. Yeah. Um, no, true. Yeah, I don't. I like the robot modes are basically the same robot mode but smaller. Mm. So not a huge pick for me there. What about you? I think I'd I'd prefer to have these to be honest. Mm. Um, the 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 camera mode was a bit chunky and fat for me, and it had like the the overall figures had the the greebly design that a lot of the toys do now, which I'm I'm not a big fan of, and obviously mm. it has the the whole hollow factor to it. I'm just looking at the pictures of them now. I did appreciate that the viewfinder split uh, apart into a, a weird shield. I thought that was a neat idea for the originals. Mm. Um, but the like, when you do, you remember the head sculpt for it, Mikey? Yeah. <laughs> do 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 you remember? Do you actually remember the head sculpt for it? Yeah. I'll send it to you anyway. There's, <laughs> it's it's devoid of personality. Oh god, it, yes. There's nothing there. He don't give a shit. That's my expression ninety percent mm. of the time. That that's not a good expression to go around with. <laughs> um, so having having these three figures with again the three separate expressions and even the the most bland one has more oomph to it. Uh, and I think I just like the smoother look. May, like maybe a small issue is there's a lot of um, cuts in the plastic to to be there for joint movement and stuff like that for ball uh, for the mushroom caps and everything like that. But I, I think this looks. These look great, um, depending mm. on the price and when they come out and how they come out. Like if they go to Kapow, uh, I'd, I'd be tempted to pick them up. If they're not yeah. at Kapow, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't think I'd be willing to import them or anything like that. But I think, if I if, again, I think I, I recall us talking about New Age before, and I think they've been well regarded in the past, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I could be tempted depending on on price. Keep me updated, mm. <laughs> Kapow. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, Mikey's not interested. Andy could be interested. We'll just ha- have to see how it goes. I want you, Mister Mikey, to tell me about uh, test prototype things have been popping up not only on, well, m- I I mostly saw these come up on Twitter to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah. So we have a product update, product update number two for the Haslab War for Cybertron Unicron. So this is a test shot, one of them there multicolored ones, of the figure, um, showing off the production mold. Um, it's got both the test shot in an alt mode and what I'm guessing is a pre-production model in the in the alt mode, a painted one or the right mm. colored one. Um, and yeah, it, in terms of everything, it's not really showing us much we didn't know. This is part. This is for fun. Um, this is broadly for fun. So we've got the box that's coming in. Um, we've got some. I don't know what the black, but the black things are. Do you what do you mean? Are? The third photo. Uh, they're the what? molds. Oh, that's the mold. Yeah, yeah. Because if you look, you can see the face of Unicron on the the oh. one on the left. 
Yeah, and the right, actually. actually. Never yeah. actually seen a mold before. Yep, that's a big um, old metal press. But most of these are Unicron in planet mode being rubbed on by a cat. Yeah, it, I don't. It, yeah, it, it looks and like Unicron is doing on. the rubbing. Yeah, but also being chewed on. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> uh, which I bet that's risky. Unicron in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. Unicron sitting next to cat. Yes. Unicron creeping out a window. And the best picture, and the only the, like the thing that said like I thank God someone's having fun with this. Unicron fishing in a in planet mode. I was concerned when I saw this photo because <laughs> I thought I, I don't know how easy it is to tip over, but I was like, oh man, if that thing falls in the water, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> My question is like, how's he going to reel it in? Oh, oh he's just a sexy chat line. Sitting there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey fish, how are you doing? <laughs> it's not Joey from Friends, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, I don't know if, to be honest. If Unicron spoke and it was Matt LeBlanc, I think we'd all pay attention. I think yes, yes, I I guarantee we'd all pay attention out of just sheer confusion. <laughs> <laughs> and he's telling you he's taking you for a test drive. Welcome to Top Gear. <laughs> I don't think he's on Top Gear anymore, is no. he? No, but then again, Top Gear died more or less. He, I know Matt LeBlanc has his own sitcom now, again. Yeah, that Matt LeBlanc, to be fair, that was Top Gear. Oh, was it? Okay, I wouldn't know. Because that, that felt f fucking staged. Oh. <laughs> oh, that wasn't very good. I've I've never been a big fan of Top Gear, but I, yeah, I'm i not a car person, so it's not a show made for me. <laughs> it's got wheels. What it do does. you What do you think of the miracle of fishing Unicron? Uh, from, I think... Oh, God, don't drown. I think it's 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 nice to see Unicron out in the real world, uh, as strange as that is to say. Meeting the gives... people, shaking hands. Exactly, yes. <laughs> giving those speeches. Because uh, we, we've seen him, or we've seen the toy next to things um, in like a studio safe setting, but this is in a house, so you get a, a vague idea of how Unicron will look like and how much space, more importantly, he's going to take up in your home. And it seems like he's, he's, he's going to eat up a lot of floor space. A lot of floor space. And the yeah. box, in quotations, he comes in more looks, <laughs> looks more like a shipping crate. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a big toy. Uh, yeah. Definitely a big toy. Um, good luck getting this through uh, import without having to pay import charges. Yeah. Here's, here's a question, Mikey. Did you think it was interesting? At least I did. That it, To me, it looked like the prototype images uh, of Unicron here looked like they were using similar colors to the, the Minicon from the old toy, mm. or the, the Armada one. Yeah, yeah, I get not, it. Not in the same places, obviously, but yeah, similar. Yeah, no, but no, I get you, I get you. I wonder if that was deliberate. Mm. In some ways, I kind of like that color scheme more. I think the robot mode could do with a bit more color, but that color scheme could work quite nicely. Neo Unicron. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, there was a Neo Unicron. I know. And it was, it was just the Galvatron. One. It was Galvatron with a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember the. No, no, he had a half a planet on his back or something, didn't he? The no, that was the toy in the show. It was Galvatron with was the it? horns. Okay, yeah. the Beast Wars Galvatron. His body taken over by Unicron. Ah! <laughs> Which was really weird watching him go. Ha 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 ha! ha. Open your mouth. Ah, to, ha, be ha, ha. to be fair, oh, that Beast Wars second movie was just pretty weird in general. That was, um, this was a Neo itself in Beast Wars Neo. Oh, it was Neo himself. Mm. Okay, I it's meant the he, one from the, the Beast Wars second movie. Oh, that's, what's his name? Majin something. Was Majin, that not Unicron? Is that Majin, Zarek? No. No, that's not Unicron. That's a big space boat. Okay, I'm misremembering that. He's a space boat, because I remember there's a scene where Galvatron is spinning his wheel. And it's a pirate I, wheel. I saw, I saw it once, um, thought it was odd, and then went, I'll, I don't think I'll watch this ever again. Not because it was bad, but because it was just like, yeah, all right. The, yeah. the the thing that's always stuck with me on that, and this is in every translation I've seen of this, mm. is the line to Lyo Jr. from, I believe it's Hell Scream, go back and suck on your mama's titties. <laughs> that's and a good I, line. And, and I hear the word, I heard the word opai when I, when in the Japanese, so they were, that's not like a colloquialism. They were telling them to <laughs> go back and play with your mom's boobs. <laughs> For kids. For kids. For kids. Um, but yeah, so for like, young kids. Galvatron, possessed by Unicron, is the main villain for the last arc of Beast Wars Neo. Hmm. 
And it's like, oh, Magmatron, we must work together. Blah. <laughs> That's the sound uh, Big Convoy makes. Blah. Me. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, um, I've not much else to say on the old planet sucker. What about you? No, no, all right. Uh, nice to know he's still coming along and production hasn't halted. Uh, I guess it's it's probably been slowed down, I would imagine. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's still would, been I, worked on. I would be worried if someone was at the factory specifically to make this Unicron. Well, Kyle's got to make his payments on his uh, third <laughs> mortgage somehow. Mm. Uh, um, so, let me move us on, on Mikey. Earth rise! Yeah, uh, kind of two pack product description reveal Prowl and Einhide. Uh, so, there's a little blurb here i may as well read a battlefield to build exclamation mark the siege is over but the war for cybertron has only just begun although the autobots and decepticons have left cybertron their fight continues in space as they search for the all spark that thing that we've never talked about before in any of our previous fictions no that see, that's since why the they... live action movie but that's why they left it's the only reason anyone leaves optimus shoots it into space he, i remember he doesn't learn Back in my day, they left. They left Cybertron <laughs> searching for Energon. None yeah, of this like, hokey pokey all spark malarkey. Also, back in our, back in your day, the planet was zooming around the galaxy. Yeah, it was great. Well, it it, it <laughs> only zo- <laughs> it only it zoomed caught, around the galaxy yeah. later when they attached engines to it. No, technically, it zoomed around the galaxy and then it stopped because it, they shot into our solar system. And uh, yes. nearly killed us. But then the planet stayed in our solar system, which is something that isn't brought up much. Did it ever, like, did it stay in an orbit? It must have stayed in some it, kind of planet, like, uh, orbit so- with solar, the sun, right? Solar orbit. Solar maybe, orbit, yeah, so, yeah it must have. They never really bring it up, but Cybertron in uh, G1 is not, like, light years away. Someone needs to do, like, a, a graph to show, to show whereabouts it was. It was a close, to, it must have been closer to us than Mars, right? Um, must when it was. Been. In um, Ultimate Doom, yeah. Like oh yeah, that, that was yeah. It that was, was closer right than the fucking was... moon. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I kind I kind of meant later when they kind of backed off a bit, which was a real problem until we brought dinosaurs and they solved it. That's right. They pushed the moon back. Uh, that was weird. It um, was. But um, I don't know. Like it was in the solar system, so you could like jazz it. Like, ooh, Autobot spacecraft could surely reach it in no time. Yeah, they didn't have any kind of like special drive, so I imagine like that. That's why I say like closer than Mars because we can kind of get to Mars in a few months. So mm. yeah, also probably we, between that does mean technically that Unicron was in striking distance of Earth. Ah, that's fine. Which no one ever really talks about. No one gives a shit about Earth. <laughs> also, that raises the question: the Quintessence planet. Where the fuck is that? Oh, Quintessa. Yeah, yeah, because that's not too far from Cybertron either, is it? No, so that just... means that's in our solar system. Is... <laughs> <laughs> almost like they didn't care about their continuity. It's yeah, it's almost like the Ultimate Doom wasn't that important, really. No, <laughs> and a I know seminal episode, Ultimate Doom. I know part one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, season one, right? Doctor Arkaville with his little robot hat. That would be immortalized forever in a bad add-on for a bad masterpiece. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, I'll continue. The Autobot Alliance and the Elite Hunters compete. Compete? Yeah, exclamation Mm. mark. The image on the packets uh, of the WFC E31 Autobot Alliance and the WFC E27 Elite Fighters show both sides of their epic battle. Not Decepticons. Okay, Elite Fighters. No, fair enough. There's supposed to be a third faction. No, oh, okay. He- I remember hearing that. But also, uh, I'm just thinking WWE while you're saying this. It's oh, yeah, like, it's, yeah, it might be that. Yeah, the Optimus coming into some real hardcore you like guitar solos. <laughs> uh, after the arc landed on Earth, combining the two uh, 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 completes... Oh, combining the two completes the battle scene. That makes sense. It helps if you read properly. <laughs> uh, Elite Fighters WFC E27 sold separately, while stocks last. Nice that that's included. Uh, tough safety officer Audible Einheide converts into Van. Oh, A Van. It does say A Van. In 22 stages, not steps, stages. Military strategist uh, Audible Prowl converts into a police car in 15 steps. Hang on. Einheide stages. Yeah. Prowl steps. That hmm. feels accurate to the characters. 
<laughs> uh, Prowl toy... has got to strut. He do. Uh, the toy also contains two blasters, transformers, and also see the kind of uh, Hasbro. So yeah, it seems like uh, this is this is going to be a thing that's coming down the the pipeline at some point. Mm. Um, who could have foreseen? Whom? Whom could have foreseen? I think it's fair to say that these two will probably be a reshell of their previous molds. Prowl, right? definitely. Ironhide. Yeah, because we saw Blue Streak, haven't we? Uh, yeah, or but Ironhide. Um, Ironhide's not very clean in his robot mode. You don't think they could like so use I've the wa- basic transformation structure and just kind of reshell, retweak him? Maybe it's just like because his whole chest collapses, doesn't it? I when don't he transforms. Know. So, because there's a lot of gaps in him, mm. and if they want him to look G1, which they do, they do. Yeah, I don't know how they they might have to do a lot of retooling if they're using the same base. It would be odd though for them to do a two pack with one. Let's just say reshell, just for the sake of easiness, reshell, and then one completely brand new mold. That's why and I was assuming that. It... Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they then sold it individually, and oh god, that toy was badly handled. Yeah, you know, we haven't had a fan vote this year. Well, to be fair, there, there's some like viruses and stuff going on at the moment, but I, I, under- I understand your meaning behind it. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, fan votes uh, are a, are an interesting thing, but maybe they should be left to character creation. So then, if they go poo, it doesn't mm. really matter. No one's super upset. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Yeah, I can't be excited. Nor I. No, right. I mean, to again, to be fair, uh, both I think both of us have made it clear that neither Prowl nor Ironhide are our, especially G one interpretations yeah. of them, are, are neither our kind of cup of tea, shall we say? Yeah. Um, but you know, these are important characters to a lot of people. Them coming in a two pack, okay, cool. Be interesting to see, like you say, what Ironhide looks like, whether he is a, a retool or he's just a brand new boy for whatever reason. Hmm. Uh, so Mikey, do you want to take us on to the well? I guess the last bit yeah, of news. Yeah, um, I'm I'm throwing this in here sheer for my own entertainment, but <laughs> um, Takara released new images of the MP51 Masterpiece RC, which are making the rounds on the internet. Now these come in sort of three sheets, right? The mm-hmm. first sheet is relatively normal. It's demonstrating RC's uh, accessories. She's going to come with some gut. She's in like shooting poses. Um, she comes with some guns and she has laser effects, um, shows her vehicle mode where she has a snipe. She's going to have a big pink sniper rifle. Is she? Yes. Oh, yeah, she is. Oh. Which raises, like, I, that oh, is pink. N- is that new? That's got to yeah. be new. Is it, is it weird? Like the, most of it is like a very, very, very creamy light pink. And then the yeah. barrel is like heavy fluorescenty pink. Yeah, that's, it'll blend in. Seamlessly. But it but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, she also comes with the little sticky outy wheel grinder thing she had in the movie. But she did um, that one time. But she did that one time because <laughs> hey, it's a masterpiece, and we must reference yes. everything to bump up yes. the price. Yeah, artificially. Uh, I'm sorry. Who said that? Who said that? Ooh. Get Ooh. out! Get out! Um, she also has a pull down visor from that one scene in Autobot City. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, and then they have her sort of posing in a very like ha ah, pose as well, like basically her headmaster's secretary pose. I like how you describe it as a ha ah, pose. Ha ah, ha. Ah. Like, or she should be going gomenosai and making someone a cup of tea, which is what ah. she basically did in Headmasters. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and an interesting here thing here we do see in this evidence she might have some sort of like interesting chest joint where like her top half would sort of is on a ball joint or a hinge or something. Like she's got a lot of she's sort of half her body leaning to the the left, and nice. I was interested in that until I saw the rest oh, yes. of the photos and realized, oh my god, yes, she has that exact joint because oh boy, um. So the rest of the photo was take a different stance. Um, we have one picture of her in a car mode. We have the butt boob shot, mm-hmm. uh, where she is looking over her shoulder and showing off her ass and just the hint of her breast. Her weird low hanging breasts. Um, <laughs> Don't be judgy. I'm not judgy. I'm just like, why are they so far? They've never been that far down before. It's Mikey, it's been, it's been 30 years since the Transformers <laughs> movie. You know. I don't know. Rouge kept them up. That's all I'll say. Fan <laughs> toys Rouge. She remained tight. 
as a tiger. Um, but also, this shows not only shows the backpack, but shows basically this thing's transformation is going to be nonsense because it's basically a car on her back. And to to be fair, I to, I think I don't think yeah. that was ever in doubt. No, but if someone comes to me and says, "But the engineering when this thing costs two two hundred and fifty quid or whatever," mm-hmm. I'm going to point at that. Um, they also have her in an action running pose, going "Hi ya." Um, and then what I can only describe as the anime, I'm in a fight, but I don't realize the male protagonist has fallen down and can see things he wasn't meant to see pose. See, I looked at, is that the one where she's holding the gun? <laughs> where she's sitting down with her legs open holding the gun. <laughs> I see that, I, I took that as she's sliding over the hood of a car or the, like a, a bar table or something nah, like that. Nah, nah, this, this is like Isekai Harim stuff. Oh, okay. Sorry. But the whole tone of this is Isekai Harim stuff. So maybe I'm uh, just not as uh, fucking perverted as some people on the internet where I looked at that one and went, ah, it's an action pose. Ah, uh, but sick um, of me. <laughs> but I will say these are demonstrating some real solid poseability on the base joints at least. Yeah, it it might not look like a super like clean and tidy no. figure, but the joints look like interesting. Yeah, it looks. I, like- I I wouldn't go as far as to say good because no, who knows how well they'll handle or if they'll destroy themselves like previous masterpiece toys seem to have done in the yeah, past. Yeah, if you're not a if you're not a Beast Wars, you're fucked really. Um and even <laughs> a Beast Wars it, just Mikey. sort of Beast Wars hold on, but they don't always win. Yeah, I was gonna say Megatron's groin exploded quite a bit if you remember. <laughs> Black Arachnia didn't. Uh yeah Dinobot also he he exploded a fair No fair Dinobot well. didn't explode. Dinobot struggled. I thought Di- people Dinobot, broke off his arms. They was did but they t- they did but it turned out basically you just have to be gentle. And add okay. a bit of, uh, like and add if you need if you want to be super careful, add a bit of shock oil. Ah, basic, right. Like that you could Dinobots is very avoidable. Megatron's is his groin will explode. Yes. Um and then we have the greatest set of pictures, which is her car mode. Her in sort of a lean back look at me legs, pick me up big boy pose. Oh boy. And her leaning on the ground in what I can only describe as a priming pose. <laughs> as she is preparing herself for the inevitable, okay. Because she is a, as I as I said, she is a female in a Japanese piece of fiction. Only two things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, saying that I'm later on, I'm going to talk about a show where none of those things happen. But um, yeah, like <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing when I saw these because these are fucking dumb. Like these aren't even like all cute dumb. These are just ridiculous. Uh, many people are angry, and Again. I don't care. Again, but I'm not going to go over my old points on that. Um, mm-hmm. But what I will say, I want to know, because what because you said to me and and someone else did as well. These are very similar to they said Figma, but I I Figma doesn't take this approach. Figma usually goes, what have the cat? What did the character do in the show? Yes, right? yeah, 100%. and pose like that. So I would leave Figma out of this. I'm thinking more statues, those like um really exaggerated proportion statues and stuff like that. Okay, and how that you know that are always in a sexy pose, even if mm. the character isn't tradition isn't traditionally sexy. Yeah. Um. So that's this is just very standard. Like you're going on the shelf to sort of lean. Photography. <laughs> like go on to Amiyami, and you won't even have to search. Just scroll down the page. I guarantee you will see a st- statue of a woman in one of these poses. Oh yeah, yeah. So so basically, someone applied that. Photogra- photography logic to this toy mm-hmm. and I just want to know who like because technically this is still a a lot of people are going it's not representing the strong female character or G1 RC was I would say you're not remembering the same GR1 RC I am yeah you I think you're remembering the the IDW RC yes who, who was who awesome char- a lot more character who we love you and I are very fond of her oh yeah she 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 is fantastic um and a, a a you know she has a great girlfriend mm-hmm. and I missed him. He both still doesn't have a toy. Still <laughs> doesn't have a fucking toy. Yeah. But um and or they say like what about Prime? Not a, not a G one RC. What about the Cyberverse? Looks like a G one RC isn't. Mm-hmm. Has many guns, many many guns. Um, G one RC, kind of sort of just sort of ran about and did nothing. Yeah. And occasionally got referenced in reference to one of the boys. And then in Headmasters, somehow found to do even less. Yes, despite being a focal character. 
Yes, she, she somehow did. Less. To be fair, though, I, I, you could argue that most of the season three characters who were in Headmasters, but she was did, made into a less. Headmaster. No, no, I, I mean, I mean, like the Headmaster. <laughs> oh, you yeah, know what I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and basically, Headmasters, where she was a secretary, who who was literally there because Chrome Dome wanted to bang her. <laughs> Like, I'm not kidding. If you haven't seen the show, her whole role is love interest. Mm-hmm. And, and she's barely in the show either. So, the. I w- you can't even say in the comics she was a strong female character. Mm-hmm. Because she was introduced. She, or Simon Furman felt the need to write a story about radical feminists demanding we make female robots. Which has aged poorly, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> um. Like, I read that comic when I was very young, and I was just like, oh, what? Like, even then I was going like, why are we explaining this? Mm. But um, it just, when I look at it, just like, characters who are literally described as the radical feminists, and who hate R.C. because she's pink, but R.C. is constantly going around going, men. She's like an hour old. Mm. She's already, men. Um, But yeah, so... I want to be there when the the Kara guy, the CEO, he said, I want to see the photos of the toy. What are we advertising? Nice. Nice. No, no, that's a different figure. (laughs) Well, that's a nice figure. (laughs) (laughs) That is also nice. Um, And my God, are people like throwing links at me now over that toy? (laughs) When I said I was trying to find her at a good price, it's just like, buy this! There well, the she ni- is! The nicey. Yeah, I've had like six or seven. Ah, oh, nice. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, so this... Have, have you just... put in a pre-order for one then or not? No, because I spent all my money in the last couple of weeks on model kits. Oh, no! <laughs> so, I need to sell something on eBay, and I think I have some stuff to throw up. Um, And when I do, I will put a pre-order in, because nice. I want to buy that toy, because it looks really fun. You know, It looks mm. like a really good like action figure. Maybe not a good Transformer, but a good action figure. Mm. Um... But yeah, this is dumb as hell, and I just, I, I love, I, I just love when you have to realize that so, it's like Kiss Players to me. Kiss Players is fascinating because someone sat down and said, at, at an official Transformers meeting, we need to do this. And then went, this is the man to do it. A man who looks like he might have eaten a child. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I, I love it. I love it to death. It, it's, it's not quite Flaymore and her magnificent figure from The Wonderful World of Sakamoto. Which I love for entirely different reasons, because that's just hilariously Japanese mm-hmm. uh, and wonderful and rather joyous. This is just <laughs> who okayed this, and I'd love to see them interviewed. <laughs> I mean, Andy, are you outraged? No, I saw you... this one. And, eh. Yeah, I will say, like, my genuine reaction is eh, because it's like it's such a nothing thing. But it's just once you make the story up in your head, man. <laughs> see to me it seems like kind of the obvious thing to do in a, mm. in a lot of ways because um that's who your market is in japan that's, mm. you know you do a girl figure generally if you're doing a girl figure you're gonna have your figures in that kind of pose for the most part mm. uh, it shows them being able to be put in dynamic poses uh, whether those are sexual dynamic poses or not, I suppose. I, I was like, I also, I just realized, you know the one where I described it as the prepared fo- pose? It's yes. also the uh, rich princess has been slapped by rough ru- by ruffian as sh- and she's just after pulling herself up before the hero punches him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could see that yeah. one as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, know yeah who it... didn't, you know who didn't need a save when ruffian punched him? Who that? Snake lady. It's true. We'll be talking about her soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not shocked by this at all. It's just it's it's another thing, and then I saw a lot of people screaming, and then just went ah I, again. Here we go. <laughs> every time, every time. <laughs> it's gonna happen every single time. If, if this ever happens, it's gonna happen. Yep. Um. As I said, there. I I would. I still maintain that I would love to see real pro- progressive discussions on this topic because it's something worth talking about. But less shouting, please. Mm. But I'm not going to go over. We did. We've done at least two shows on that now, haven't we? Oh, at least I'd say probably more. To be honest, and probably lost many friends. Eh, I doubt it. And and probably lost a few enemies as well. But we don't. Oh, know that. how can you lose an enemy? That doesn't make sense. What? Do you not just gain enemies? If you no. lose an enemy, they become your friend. Or dead. Oh well, yeah, that's that's true. I suppose. Not that I'm insinuating. I'm eh, 
Okay, well, you know, sometimes, sometimes it happens. <laughs> sometimes fields fertilize themselves. It's true. It's true. Uh, if they are is, farmed heartily. <laughs> uh, is there anything else uh, um, worth talking about here, Mikey? Not in this. Right. Um, then, Mr. Mikey, I suppose it's time that we move over to the world of what we did this week. So, what did you do this week? This week, I finished my Zoid. Uh, my HMM Bone Genosaur Dinosaur Expo 2019 version. How long did it take you all together, would you say? Um, I was averaging about two hours a night. And you said that that was mainly because of panel lining, right? Yeah, the pan- like I'd say that the actual build, if you did two hours a night, you'd have it done three four days mm. uh, but because i had the bone colored version there is an enormous amount of detail that's not being picked up which you wouldn't be able to panel line in the blue or the black because it's a very deep blue um and obviously the black is black uh but um so a lot of panel lining as a build i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed the build um i'd say i hit 12 hours by the end of it um, which I think is actually re- for like a master above master grade kind of figure. I think that's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, the it has problems as a build. There's some very finicky bits and some bits that you absolutely are going to need to glue. And unfortunately, I have uh, no modeling glue or no super oh, glue handy. So uh, they I, they will fall off, but at least they're easy enough to stick back on. Um, How small are these pieces? Are the like small. if they fall on the carpet, they vanish? Yeah, they, uh, they don't have a carpet. I hate that. I hate yeah. that. <laughs> um, so I I'd, I'd say the build is like a nine out of ten. Mm. Really enjoyable, and like when you think this is a kit that's from two thousand and seven. Wow! Yeah. Because as I I think I told you the other week, there's only like there's less than ten molds in the Zoids HMM line, and it's been going since two thousand and seven. It's still bizarre that they it's simple. It's simply kind of just repainting Repaints. the same thing over Repaints and over again, or just re-releases. That's mad. Yeah, um, they've got a new mold coming out this year for the Zoids Wild Show, and that's got at least three repaints in it. <laughs> How much new stuff? Uh, it's a brand new mold. It's completely new. Okay, but it's the only one announced at the moment. Um, right. I think I think kind of they've covered a lot of the big characters, but as anyway as a figure, it's flawed. Um, the joints are solid, but there is a, you you're going to knock stuff off very very easily um, until like you say you get some super glue or, or uh, yeah. model glue to stick it um, on it's got all it's got solid like in, in terms of solid i mean good good articulation the wrists are really good um mm. it's got good shoulders it's got hip rotation it's got uh good back and forth it's got got a remarkable amount of ankle tilt that it can never use the tail if it wasn't for the the attachment at the base of the tail being a bit loose, it would be the best thing of the toy, because it's got up down it's got up down at every single break in the tail. So it's like three three up joints and three down joints, and then it's got side to side joints. So you can get really good to, like uh, articulation out of it. Um, the head it, it has very simple articulation, but it does work. There's a bit of a ball joint in the body, so you have a little side to side motion in the chest. But I, I individually the joints are cool, but then you try to get them to work together, and it it feels awkward. All right, okay. Um, so I would say the figures are seven out of ten. It looks amazing. I absolutely think it's gorgeous. But the handle, it's not the it's just not the the friendliest thing in the world. Hmm. Um, I'm very, I want to, because I, I, afterwards I went, read a review where they described the Genosaur as kind of the bottom of the pile. Oh, so it's like, the worst of them. Yeah, but like, it's a very oh, popular, right. it's a very popular Zoid, it's a very popular design. So, you know, uh, there's been loads of version of it, but they said like, the, the build has aged terribly. Mm. Um, so I'm re, because they, and then they were talking about, um, the Liger Zero and the Berserk Fuhrer, and they said they, they are really, really good kits. So I want to pick up at least one version of the Zero. There's like there's the base Zero and the three others, and I'll if I can't find him, I'll try and pick up the Fuhrer. Um, the Fuhrer. Uh, <laughs> I, see, I thought you were going there as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, I want to give them a go. Like the 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 Berserk Fuhrer is not my favorite design by any stretch, uh, but there is kind of a weird red version of that 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 I might try. But if I don't like, I just want to try building another kit from the line. 
Um, and then it's like, is then it'll become, is there any design in here I really like that, that I really want to get of the ones I don't have? Mm -hmm. um, but that thing, not a lot of molds in this, so I don't have to worry about like it being too much of a money sink. Gunpla has been a bane of my existence all week. Um, yes, yeah, you could easily say that the a problem with Gunpla versus um, the Zoid stuff, like you say, there's barely any molds for you to worry about. You get one of them and you're like, okay, mm. I'm done, pretty much. With Gundam, there's like hundreds of designs. Yeah, hundreds and, of designs, and then at different scales as well and complexities yeah, on top of it. Yeah, it has saved me money though because I'll be putting stuff in a, in a cart and then I'll freeze it just like, but do I want these over that? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> still haven't decided which Gundam show to watch because other, sh other shit happened, really. Yes. Um, so I, I will have, I probably will at least get a bit deeper into turn A. Um, but I want to try some sort of base Universal Century stuff. I might just try Zeta. I was going to do the movies, and then I the movie of the first ser sh series, which I always... Like, I'd seen a couple of episodes of, of Mobile Suit Gundam. I didn't really care for it. Mm -hmm. But then someone someone who hadn't seen any Gundam before watched the movies and said, it's like watching a quarter of a film and expecting to understand whether or not it's good or bad. He, couldn't rate, and, he said he couldn't and, rate it. And yet... That's I don't the... think it cuts out a huge amount of important mm. stuff from the series, which is weird because I would kind of agree with him. Yeah, and all, but that thing, like those movies, are what saved Gundam. Yeah, I bet. Because yeah. the, the 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 originally the show didn't do well from what I was reading. No, at all. And then those movies came. It got it. It, it basically got the okay for Zeta, and then Zeta Zeta defined Gundam. Pretty much. Yeah. So, um, and then model kits came around, and people were like, oh, oh damn, <laughs> we can yeah. make some money. Yeah. And then people were telling you, this is a pure and noble thing, completely devoid from the horrible childishness of other toy lines and robot lines. And just like, yeah, and by the way, buy all these model kits. That are I, th I think the, the children. I think the, 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 the child kind of pushing on kids kind of comes more into Double Zeta, where it becomes much more kid friendly and happy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Obviously, yeah. Obviously, yeah. his wife told him, don't make such a fucking depressing show next time. And he went, okay, and made Double Zeta. Yeah, but th apparently that's a thing with him. What's that? He because he, he he's kind he's kind of like um the guy who's no he's like, not like Evangelion no he no he is actually he is <laughs> he, he they he, they both have severe depression <laughs> Deki uh well I don't know whatever his name is um he's got depression but the way he deals with it he does a depression show and then he does a happy show yeah and like he did like some mech show where like where everyone fucking dies mm -hmm. and then he followed it up with like this comedy about some sort of weird like kind of what was it um it was a mech show but it was like the, that kind of like it felt like a really 90s aren't we all friends space comedy right like i haven't seen it but i've seen trailers for it and that's what he did he'd do a depressing show and then he'd do a really happy show and he kept on doing that up until like the mid 90s early 2000s where apparently he um got some a lot of help and did a lot more positive shows. Hmm. So I don't know. Um then he did Reckonist in G, which I've seen one episode and I don't Ooh, want to boy. watch the rest of. But Genner Abachi apparently loves that show. Well that's that's fine. People are allowed but... to like things that aren't good. <laughs> no, that's, that's a true statement. I, I, know, I, I true. like things that are terrible as well, but <laughs> I know you do. Yeah. So. Um but uh so yeah, so my that but yeah, as a model kid, I'd say Genosaur, looking back in it, if I wanted to go into the series with the, oh my god, I wanted best experience, this would not be the figure I'd lead with. But mm -hmm. as a starter build, I enjoyed it. Um, so we'll see what else I do in that regard. Um, Kamen Rider 01, episode 35 aired. It's the last new episode for a while. They're doing clip shows for the next few weeks. I think it's at least three weeks. Um, this was a really interesting one to go uh, out on. Um, mostly about Horby, which hasn't been something for a while. Uh, dealing with his motivation, adding some new layers to his character. Um, Aruto was kind of superfluous in a way. Um, but we also get a really funny stuff with Vulcan, where you find out his true backstory, and it's hilarious. Um, and also a really solid fight between Horby and Bowser. Um, particularly the camera work, like I, what this is kind of like build in that it's got some really inventive camera work, um, not as good in in terms of build in this camera work, but like I really like what they do with it. 
And yeah, Harbi's a cool suit, and I kind of like how they basically said, yeah, it's the original suit from the start of the show, but we've the guy's just very, very good at fighting. Okay. So even if he's massively overpowered, he can still win because he's just that good. He's mm. basically Zangetz, except evil. Um, and a scorpion. But um, no, yeah, so I like, uh, continue to enjoy the show. You know, gonna miss it in the next few weeks because I'm not bothering watching clip shows, but um, I might check out Kira Major since I saw somebody who ha- doesn't like modern Sentai say it's the Sentai that got him re- watching Sentai again. So, so what is that? Is that uh, the new Sentai series? Yeah, which is all G. Ge- it's about genie jewels and rescue vehicles. Oh, okay. So, um, weird combo. I'll tr- yeah, I'll try a couple of episodes, but Ryu Soldier started off really well and then got pretty bad. I can't imagine it's going to diverge from the usual kind of Sentai stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it I might. Mean, but... It might, but it's been a while since they've really done it right. Yeah. Um... Skippy. I'm trying to remember because there was a couple of other things as well. Uh, watch Build Fighters episode. You mean re- Do you mean Re-Rise? Re-Rise, Build sorry. Bill Divers, Bill Fighters, Bill Divers rewrite <laughs> episode seventeen. I want to say, um, I think so. which was a lot more actiony, but felt slightly like they needed to put an action episode in between two exposition episodes. Yes, um, but I, I liked the action. I thought the action was good in it, um, and I'm really liking the Alice Gundam. I'm, I'm I like that design. Uh, Enough to buy it. one. Kinda, yeah. Um, See, I, I'd say I like it a lot like... more than the Earth Three. Oh, well, that's yeah. I mean, Earth Three is boring. Yeah, I'd to be honest, Mikey, I'd say wait because I remember when the Earth Three originally came out, and it was like, oh, that's kind of neat. And then the other, the Mars one came out. I was like, oh. mm. I mean, if you just wait, the the exact same model kit will probably come out and have maybe a different design and be better. Well, there's another core Gundam uh, coming out that's not in the show, mm. which looks kind of like oh, the from, Ast- from, that's from the um the manga, isn't it? Yeah, it looks a bit like the Astray. Uh, right. Uh, the red frame, but um, I've become that guy. Like I'm not even familiar with the stuff I'm quoting. Like, <laughs> yeah. The red frame, not the blue or the gold frame. The red frame. The gold frame also is more black. Gold. Ugh, kill me. Also, the the phoenix unicorn one looks terrible. The the gold one. That's awful. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's, a little bit on the gaudy side. That's that's really bad. Mm-hmm. And I and I struggle with some of the unicorn designs anyway. But that's ooh, oh that's wow. Bad. I do. Fight me. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, but sort of the there was there anything else major? Oh yes. Um, I uh, yesterday I started playing Marvel's Sp- Spider Man. Ooh, on the PS4. Um, so I already know I love the story. Yep. Um, so this is me getting into the gameplay. Gameplay is solid. It looked like it from when I saw the the game. Uh, pe- people play the game whenever it came, like what is it? Two years, three years ago. Combat is two basically years. an improved version of uh, the Arkham series. Yeah, um, and I mean an improved version of the Arkham series. A lot of options, even very early on, but you do feel like it's weird. Like you're just button mashing basically with a couple of like oh dodge here, oh web here. But looking at the screen, you feel like a fucking badass. Have you had to catch pigeons yet? Yes. I <laughs> killed those pigeons. pigeons. They're dead. <laughs> it, but they, that looks like one of the more annoying parts of the game from what I remember. I stopped oh, the pigeon. pigeon. <laughs> but like that pigeon is dead. He he grabbed him with a web and yanked him. That's that fine. Pigeon, he's eating that pigeon because it's Peter and he's got no money. No, it's true. Got to um, eat somehow. But people have said this and it really needs pointed out. The swinging mechanics are amazing. And incredibly user friendly. Mm-hmm. Again, like basically, you can swing through the whole city just holding down R two. You never have to take your finger off it, and you will look cool. And you will like you'll have him running along the side of buildings or stuff like that. But you can, if you really want to get into it and use the the, the speed up functions and the extending functions and the the jump function in the middle of it, it just looks so cool. It feels so good. Which uh, like, which game was it, Mikey, where you were playing the Spider-Man and each trigger was uh, your left arm, right arm for swinging? Do you remember that? 
Uh, yeah, but I'm ama- which one was that? That might be in the Amazing Spider-Man, the yeah, Andrew Garfield one, I think. Because he was in a because it was the it was one of the first ones where it wasn't just like swinging in the air. Because Spider-Man Two had the big swinging, had like the swing off the buildings. That's right, yeah. And that was really good. But the Spider-Man Three, I think it was amazing. I think I remember it wasn't amazing. Oh no, no. Um, <laughs> but no, this is like this feels natural. It feels really well done. And like I mm-hmm. said, I love the story already. So I'm just like, hey, it's been ages since I've seen the story. I'm getting into it. Um, I'm also like, I, I, I'm doing something I very rarely do. And I'm getting really into collectibles. It's usually not my thing, but I want all the suits. Yeah. I want all the suits. I'm currently going around in, I, I, it's the black suit from Homecoming. One of the, or one of the Spider-Man movies. And I got it because I thought, oh, they don't have noir in this. And then I saw they have noir in this. And I'm just like, I need to get noir. I, I need to be Nicolas Cage. Um, and I really wish there was a mod out there where you could put in Nicolas Cage's voice. <laughs> that would be amazing. If you have uh, friends with Nick Cage and get him to come around to your house. <laughs> boom. True. Before he starts filming Tiger King. Exactly. Um, but yeah, apart from that, we had animes. Um, one I will leave for you to bring up since you did you watch it first. Um, and the other one was the second half of BNA Brand New Animal came out. Animal. Animal, which is of course the twelve episode, twelve episode now confirmed show from Trigger. Uh, I will start with a criticism. It would have benefited from being a longer series. Oh, There's... so it's a Trigger show. <laughs> Yeah, um, there's because couple... I, I think that's a, that's a general complaint we've had well, is yeah, for the, the most part. Tr- Trigger are clearly Trigger feel like they start with 24 episode, um, pacing and plot and everything else, and then someone like someone bursts in and saying you're doing 12, and they're just like, or someone Fine. went, oh, we've we've gone through all of our budget, we can't have another season. <laughs> 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 Shit. Um, but yeah, so a rem- basic plot reminder. Mitru is a human girl in a world where animal people live and they are there's a lot of racism and they are kept in their own city and she suddenly turns into one and has to escape to the city, meets a wolf who beats the shit out of things and tries to figure out why she got turned into a beast man, which is what they're called, beast man, um, because she has <laughs> no idea, no, no, this has never happened before. And also there's a mystery about, ooh, evil pharmaceutical company, or are they evil? Um, but yeah, so it wrapped up, uh, last half of the show. I mean, I mean, I want to try and surprise people, but hey, Trigger did a really solid show again. Did Trigger save anime again? Well, Trigger Which is saved... always the meme. <laughs> people, people, the, the, you know the, um, the meme of your man looking at the, the hot girl walking away? Now yes. it's just become Beastars is, uh, the, your girlfriend, and uh, BNA is the 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 girl walking in front, <laughs> and like that's yeah. going around. Um, Lego, poor old Legozi left behind <laughs> <laughs> for Shiro, the White Wolf, um, who you do see naked. Okay, because, he, cool. because he's a he's a wolf. He you can't see anything because it's on the inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though he's standing up on two legs, <laughs> no one brings it up either. No one goes like you're naked. Um, but. Yeah, Trigger did good again, like as they consistently do. Like I can't say there's something in, with Trigger involved. Like I'm sure there's something out there from Trigger I don't like. But even when I say oh I don't like this, it's oh wait Trigger stopped working on it at this stage. It was great before then. There was that weird cop show that they did. I wasn't even... a big fan of that. It's weird. Yeah. It's 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 a it, that feel that to me felt more like um like an art project. I think like, it kind of was because yeah. a lot of the because I'm a, I think it was either late Gynax or early Trigger they did do a lot of little short pieces like that. Yeah, they did a weird one about a living sex doll working for a detective. Oh, okay. Did they do Pantheon Stocking or was that technically Gynax? Uh, that was Gynax. I believe. Okay. Um, because I did I didn't like that because like obviously people from. Gynax moved on to Studio Trigger. Yeah, that, that's why I asked because I, mm. I I remember that that was a thing, and I couldn't remember because mm. Pandy and Stocking was probably probably the last Gynax thing, right? I, one of them, if not the, one of them. But yeah. like Studio Trigger, start with Kill the Kill, and oh, just right, shut yeah. shut everyone the fuck up. Yeah, 
and like people have come back to me occasionally and said like oh that show's aged badly and i have Has sat down and told them no it fucking hasn't i've rewatched it again recently like holy shit it's so good i i guess if you if i was gonna throw out a really lame complaint i'd go the animation budget was clearly spent on like the first episode and then they kind of but then drop the, it down but, quite a bit but they're but, so clever with it. yeah they're so clever uh, yeah that's why i say it's like a really petty complaint because it, be- it becomes part of the art style yeah like they went oh maybe we don't have the budget fuck it mm-hmm. let's like, do a really cheap episode that's the comedy episode that uh that there's not much lot... animations yeah. but it's just fun <laughs> yeah um but yeah there's a lot of tr- what i would call trigger animation moments in bna um, mm. it's not a super action series either. It's got a lot of action, but it's not super action focused. So, um, but you know, there, there's the, the way the, the, the slum characters are presented will remind you of some stuff from Kill the Kill. Um, there's a really fun fight scene in the last episode that has the cutaways that again feel very Kill the Kill. Um, just the general smooth movement and the exaggerated proportions, everything else is just like, mm! so I love it. Um, characters are really solid. I love all the characters in this. Shiro, I think, is a great um, sort of secondary protagonist. Uh, Michiru is wonderful. She is a completely non-action protagonist. She has little action moments, but that's not what she's about. Mm. She's that's about not a main story, right? Her her main story is her POV. Yeah. She is a human in this new world. Um, and she's great. And she says some some of the best things I've seen uh, that anime protagonists say in a while in terms of like, maybe you should listen to this fictional character telling you how to live your life. <laughs> um, but the fascinating thing for me is that the show is largely about racism. Mm-hmm. All forms of racism. Like, it's about fanatical racism where you will lynch someone if for being different. It's about the racism of someone who was oppressed and therefore assumes that every person from the same race as their oppressor is a bruta- is a brutalizer and an abuser um, which is not a racism people talk about very often no then it has the racism of someone who is actually very open and welcoming but either true inexperience or just naivety can be very casually racist mm-hmm. and it just touches on all these and it doesn't excuse any of them but it does what it basically comes to is about like and we need to work past this mm-hmm. and you don't get over things in a day, but you need to learn to get over some of these things. Like if you're if you're like completely innocently insensitive and racist, you need to develop that bit of awareness. Um, if you have a like severe bias against someone, not because of anything they did, but because they look like someone who did something wrong to you years ago, you got to take people for who they are, not who you're afraid they are. If you're lynching people, stop doing that. But um, just as a rule, anyway, really. But no, I really liked it. Um, it's not one of Trigger's most amazing shows. Like, it's not Gridman, and it ain't Kill the Kill. No. Like, it's not even the better parts of Darling in the Franks. Um, it's a lot better than the last quarter of Darling in the Franks, but again, Trigger left. <laughs> really hard for me to get... It's really hard for me to discuss that when I go like, God, I love three quarters of that show. Oh, you left. Shit. Um... But no, I really recommend it. Uh, 12 episodes, it's an easy watch. Um, like I said, there's a few pacing things. One in particular at the end, which I know annoyed some people. For me, it didn't bother me at all. but Because uh, I feel they at least rapidly covered what it was. And it leads to some really cool scenes and some cool visuals. Um, but no, like uh, I thought it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, one, furry anime is doing well at the moment, which is uh, something no one ever thought they'd say. And two, Trigger continues to be good. And uh, this finally got me to get hold of Primary, so I will be watching that this week. Oh, you got it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so good. I will be watching that. I hope um, you enjoy it. I hope I do too, but be blunt, I'd be more surprised if I didn't now. I, th- I think you might have the complaint of, I, just, I wish this yeah, was the I'm show. I'm going to go back over to the more episodes in the to flush out the universe. Because it's, like, it's a movie, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go back over Trigger's back catalogue and see what there was. Was there anything that I did either is there anything I haven't seen or is there anything I didn't particularly care for? Mm-hmm. And we're see well maybe I'll give something a rewatch. Anyway, Trigger, amazing, amazing animation studio. Uh the the key image for Dinosaur came out this week and apparently it's already full of Transformers references for Beast Wars hey. Slapper. Oh, um, oh but, okay. And the, uh, yeah, um, I I really 
really want more trigger stuff. I can't emphasize that enough. But um, and the intro is fun. Andy, what did you get up to? Uh, well, I started B and A. Band new animal. Animal. Um, animal. I haven't got that far through it. Uh, I got the the episode I finished on last night was Dolphin Girl episode. Yeah, that's that's a mean one. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh yeah, it's 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 a it's a good anime. It's it's very trigger. Like as soon as you start yeah. watching and you've seen trigger stuff, you're like, oh yeah, I know I know these camera shots. I know these angles. I know mm. how uh, character models kind of bend and and twist and um, mm. move like a trigger character would. Um, so I mean, if you don't like the way the trigger animates this stuff, you know, you, you're not gonna like this, obviously. <laughs> mm. Um. But uh, I I don't like the intro. I like the outro more. I like the outro a lot more. I like the intro. But then I think it's one that, like, there's all these little references to science-y stuff that tickle me. Hmm. But um, it's it's the, the bit where they do see the, the sort of the, the cut across towards, like, the second half of the intro where everyone's turning from their human to their animal forms. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I, that, I really like that bit. I, th- I think it's... For for me, I I looked at that intro and thought, ah, oh, it's 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 fairly standard for an anime, and the music didn't hit me. Uh, I like the outro mm. a lot more because of how stylized it is. It uses like what two or three colors, like yeah, no, it's aggressive very pink, aggressive mm. uh, teal blue, and maybe some white. Uh, mm. And then it's done in s- not the same style as the anime, but a slightly um children's book style yeah storybook style yeah, yeah storybook style which uh, and it's got really nice soothing music which granted mm. they also used in the uh the dolphin girl episode like three or four times so i was getting a bit sick of it because <laughs> they played it yeah. once and she she turned into a human and then they played it again at the party and then they played it like again at the outro i was like god damn stop stop <laughs> i know it's your song but jesus calm down um but no I, i've been really i i have been enjoying it it's it's a good show um i look forward to seeing mm. where it goes i'm slightly disappointed to hear from you that it, it i'm probably gonna have the same feeling as you and be like i wish there was more episodes um but i don't i don't think excluding darling and darling in the franks that there's really been many trigger shows where i've came away and gone man I didn't like that. I'm always excited for the next trigger show, or I'm mm. always, I'm always at the very, at the very least, very interested to see what they do. It's always something like they will always play. Yeah, there's always going to be something that that'll get your interest for even a short while. Mm. Like yeah. when Gridman was announced, I wasn't interested until I saw, it. like, because I had no interest in Gridman at the time, until I saw the animation studio. Hmm. And I was like, oh, so they're probably going to get in a good writer and they're probably going to do something interesting with, with, the, with the visuals. I think and... I was partially interested because I remember that there was the, do you remember they had the like promo Gridman teaser trailer, but it wasn't mm. anything to do with the show. It was just a Gridman thing that took place. Yeah. It was a Gridman Sigma, wasn't it? Or something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. That, well, that was, um, that was from years before. That yeah. was like, they, that was something they did very early on basically as a proof of concept a long th- time ago i think th- it got me though because i think uh one of the websites put it up because they said ah sss gridman's coming out this is something that uh trigger did years ago as a proof of concept here's that trailer and i looked at that mm. and went oh this looks neat i remember super Samurai cyber squad i mm. kind of enjoyed that um so it it did pull me in, and then obviously the show was great. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the show was amazing. Eh, you know, eh, eh, eh. someone tried um, to t- again. Someone tried to tell me they didn't think Gridman was great. And did they? Did they say why? Was there like um, they 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 didn't like uh, the female leads? And I was just like, you can go the hell. <laughs> like, did they again I, say what what was it about them that didn't like? Or was um, it just I didn't like they, them? They thought Rika was bland, and. Uh, mm. I don't think Rika's bland. I think she fills out a perfect narrative role. <laughs> perfect narrative role. Yeah. And they didn't find our wonderful lady cap- uh, interesting as a villain. I mean, how many episodes did, did they watch the whole show? Don't know. Don't care. They're bad people. I mean, I, I would be very confused if you got to the end of Gridman and you didn't think Akane was a fascinating antagonist. Yeah. Because... If you just watched maybe the first episode and said, oh, I don't really like it, you'd be like, ah, well, they haven't really done anything with Akane to get you interested. She's just, aha, I made I made a moonstab. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. I feel like someone saw like some of the the sexy promo images and just went like, oh, bland, uh, bland boob character, and then and thigh like, character. No, they were yeah. they were way more about the thigh than they were about the boob. To be fair, well, well Rika was. Rika certainly was, but because, to be fair, Akane was all about the cre- <laughs> because the creator was into women with big butts. Uh, to be and um, uh, <laughs> Akane was all about the the stockings, wasn't she? If I remember, yes, she was. There was so that, that was why the, that's fo- is that fetish? fetish or is that a different thing? That, I don't know. Stocking but like, fetish. I don't know. She played footsie once or twice. Hmm. But then Me. again, she played footsie and then threw a plate oh. of food at the poor guy. Oh no, Mikey. Oh mm. no. Does Trigger go through all of the fetishes? Is that, what, <laughs> is, that is that what this is? Is this Trigger's like plan? Like they do exhibitionism for a uh, kill the kill, oh. and and they've done foot fetish and they've done um, uh, big asses and thighs mm. and and now they've done furries for BNA. Yeah, I mean, oh no, I'd say Akane does include breast fetishes, but they would probably work someone in specifically for it next time. You know, we've got BDSM in Trigger as well. Oh God, yes, with Gamagori. <laughs> Man, with Gamagori. We're hitting all of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, what will, what will happen next in Gridman? What will be well, the next also, folk to kiss fetish? Darling in the Franks. Yes, yeah. Which is so many fetishes, so many fetishes. Damn. I think I we've think, cracked a nut here. I, yeah. Unless so, someone's probably <laughs> mentioned or this bu- before, or busted a nut. Hey. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I okay. there. But um, but no, sorry. Uh, as open, I try to be open to people of different views, different opinions, different backgrounds. Don't come at me and say Gridman's bad because Akane's not a good villain. I, I find that disappointing. If they, you you, if they you reject like you reject joy. Do you want to talk about something that was disappointing that you didn't spend a lot of time with, and I would have talked about last week, but we didn't have enough time? Yeah, sure. Mall Combat Legends Mortal. Scorpion's Revenge. Scorpion punched a bunch of people, and I got bored. You did not get far through that, did you, Mikey? <laughs> no, I didn't. I watched it because I was like, it can't be this bad. It can't be this bad. It's going to get interesting. <laughs> it never got interesting. <laughs> it never got interesting. But I think bo- both you and I were hesitant when we saw trailers of it because uh, I don't think, again, you or I have been that impressed with Warner Brothers' um DC movie production stuff, and this is it, this very much falls into that kind of category, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's been the occasional ones that peaked in interest, but in general, it's in been general, a long time since any of those peaked in interest. I don't know Batman Ninja was fun, dumb as a uh, brick, but fun. Oh right, yeah, and that yeah, that was so not the usual stuff that they do. No, I've still I've never seen the dub for that. I'm very I might one day because like it basically samurai pizza cats. <laughs> they completely redid the script. I could believe without, that without translating anything. Oh, they just, okay, okay. They just rewrote the script with the movie playing in silent. It was basically the eighties <laughs> again. Oh dear. So I'm very curious to see what that turned out as. But um, yeah, no, I got bored. How far did you get through? Ten, fifteen. Uh, ten. Okay, fifteen minutes. Uh, so you got to Scorpion going to the Nether Realm, basically. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so if you wondered what this is, this is... I I would describe this animated movie as a less interesting version of the 90s live-action movie. Hmm. Your thoughts? Agree or disagree with me? Would yeah. You much, I, think, I would rather watch the live-action one. I like the live-action one. Uh, I can understand why people wouldn't, because it's not mm. a good film, but it's I find <laughs> it incredibly fun. Yeah, it's stupid, mindless fun, um, and I think it does. <sighs> I it doesn't do a good representation of the Mortal Kombat one story. Um, mm. It does a, at best, mildly competent. At best, um, <laughs> you know, it has Liu Kang fighting and Shang Tsung and all that. Uh, I'm going to spoil it, so if you don't want to be spoiled on this, you know, jump ahead. But if you want the actual representation of what the Mortal Kombat 1 story is, play Mortal Kombat 9. Obviously, they do a bit of tomfoolery with time travel and whatnot, but if just that. That is what Mortal Kombat 1 is. It's that, but obviously with a few tweaks to it. Uh, so, hmm. Mikey, who who beats Goro? In, I mean, if you, I mean, do you know the Mortal Kombat story generally? No, I did, but I've forgotten it. <laughs> okay. So it's meant to be Liu Kang beats um, beats Goro. 
Uh, mm. And then he goes on to fight Shang Tsung and he wins and that's it. And that's, you know, that's what happens. That's what goes down and he wins. And it's like, yay, Earth Realm saved. Uh, in this, he doesn't beat Goro. The only reason he wins is because at the last second before Liu Kang's killed Scorpion, uh, harpoons the back of um, Goro's skull and pulls it out the back of his head. And I'm like, that's ah. not the story. Why is this happening? What's going on? There is no fight with Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung says, I'm Audi 5000, bitch. See you later. <laughs> and and leaves. Uh, and then there's a fight between him and uh, Quan Chi, which again isn't meant to happen for years. Uh, Sh- uh, Scorpion isn't an antagonist to the heroes of Earthrealm, which again, he should be. He should be just about uh, killing, I think it's, uh, what's it, Sub-Zero's name? Bihan? That's his like real name. Um because of like the murder of his family but it's 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 not it's like a cookie a cookie cutter version to be like everyone likes scorpion he's the good guy him murdering everybody's a righteous cause he's not a, ra- a bad guy at all it's like no no scorpion was a very very bad man <laughs> very <laughs> very bad man he was uh mm-hmm. captain fucking ahab about this shit um it's it it feels like it's an edgy boy cartoon. If I was like 15, I'd probably think this was pretty cool because of all the blood and stuff. But man, Mikey, I still, as I said earlier, I think the live action movie is just better. It's a lot more fun. Mm. Um, I I don't recommend this. I finished it and was like, yep, that's a thing. Woo boy. Oh boy. Hmm. And I mean, you didn't even finish it. And the, it, I usually no. you finish things for the most part, even I, if you don't like yeah, them. Yeah, I got bored. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, so I did that. That was last week. Um, we both did. It, I neither of us would really recommend it. But if you want to do the do's, you know, you do the do's. I but won't don't. tell you what not to do with your life, but I would <laughs> tell you that I think you could spend your time better. I would agree. Yes. Uh, so. Apart from that and uh, BNM, uh, BNA, BNM, uh, I've been watching <laughs> uh, Hami Fura, I think it's called, which is the uh, the villainous uh, show where all paths lead to doom. I think is the the, the the translation or something like that, isn't it? Um, they're the longer one, which is like I got resurrected as a villainous in a Natome game, and ever and all paths lead to doom. Lead to doom. Yeah, it's it's a big yeah. long one, and it, that's. The, the word I said before, the Japanese word, is the kind of shortened down version, like Bofuri is the shortened down version, Dan Machi is the shortened down version of Is It Okay to Pick Up a Girl in the Dungeon, uh, Konosuba is the shortened down version, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Because for some re- reason, writers for light novels uh, at the moment want to make the longest title they possibly can, and I don't know who comes up with the shortened version. I imagine it's maybe the fans because they're like, "Fuck this shit." <laughs> uh, but I started that, uh, I and I burned through six episodes in one night. I was like, "Oh shit, okay, that was that." So the basic idea is, you start off in a very Victorian land where there is very low level magic. It's not very, it's not like epic magic spells or anything like that, uh, Kona Super style. Um, and a small bratty rich girl uh, kind of trips over, uh, bangs her head on the floor, and remember remembers her past life, where she remembers she was a 17-year-old uh, otaku girl who liked to play uh, um, romance games, you know, male mm. romance games. I don't know what the... It's not a harem. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a visual novel. It's, yeah. She, she, she liked playing... A, 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 they're, technically, it's a tome game. Okay. That's, it, that's it, the reverse uh, harem style game, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, where the, the, the main uh, protagonist gets all the pretty boys. All of the pretty boys. All the pretty boys. Uh, so she realized she's been reincarnated as the antagonist of that um, of that game. Because it's the game world, but it's real. It's not like a fake world where everyone's just programmed. It seems to be reality. Just um, with her knowledge that it was based off a game. Or a game was based off of it. One way mm. or the other. Uh, and she then realizes, okay, I don't want to be exiled. Uh, I don't want to be murdered. I-, I want to have a happy life. So what will I do? I know I will be nice to everybody. And by the end of this show, they well, by episode three, they'll all want to have sex with me. Even the, <laughs> even, even the female characters who are meant to be the rivals of the main heroine, I will make them want to have sex with me as well. And the main heroine, she will also want to have sex with me as well. This is not, uh, oh, 
Garrick's really gay with Doctor Bashir, and you're like, no, he's not. <laughs> this is <laughs> no. They they want to they want to date and they want to be in an intimate relationship uh, with Katarina, as she's called in the show. Yeah. Um, and the, the the prime example is uh, when they they're grown up and they're 15 and they're at a party. Uh, she's outside on the balcony, and uh, her her girlfriends come out and they're like, ah. Oh, uh, she says, oh, I wish we could all dance, but I, I only know the female lead. And one of them goes, oh, well, I learned the, the male uh, lead for the dance specifically. And then the other friend says the exact same thing. I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you don't realize, do you? You're a dense main character who doesn't realize everyone wants them. And she yeah. is. Well, yeah, we should say, like, when, when we say everyone want to have sex with her, that's not the plan. No. The plan is survive. Yeah, the plan's just to just to make it through. The plan is to do it in a... Like, she doesn't want everyone to stop falling in love as they do in the game. Mm-hmm. She just wants to make it out the other side. But by accident, she... I by guess being she re- so nice but to al- everyone. But also <laughs> accidentally remembering how the romance lines go in the game for mm. the characters, she kind of does those. So, for instance, with the girl who wanted to dance with her... Uh, one of the boy characters was meant to come up to her in the garden scene and say, oh, you've got a green thumb. You're so good at growing all these flowers. And she goes, oh my God, I'm special. Uh, and by accident, she, uh, Katerina does that. So she starts <laughs> having that kind of relationship with her. And she literally picks up all of the romance options mm. by accident with each of the characters. Um, it's delight. The show's delightful. It's not only funny. Um, but it's charming. Uh, by the end of episode one, you you remember with um, oh, what's the what's the little brother called? Uh, Keith. Keith, yeah, with Keith when she busts down the door with an axe and like, <laughs> you're not <laughs> gonna be left alone. I was like, yeah, I really wet myself when she did that because I, I thought she was gonna ram the door. I, I thought was gonna that be, like as small well. child bounces off door and just like, yes. nope, <laughs> she got a fucking axe. Yeah, I, I that was that was great. Uh, I I hope you're not standing close to the door. I'm not. Axe smashes through. I I was sure there was going to be a shot of her pressing her face against the door, going, <laughs> "We'll be friends, Keith." I thought it was when she fell on him and just started. He's his eyes are wide open. He's fine. She's yes. holding him like he's dead, screaming, "I've killed my brother with my butt!" <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't get brighter. No, no, she. It's it, she's not stupid. She's just like. She, I, I think she represents a good, like, stereotypical female otaku in a lot of ways. She has the, She's like, those characteristics. Yeah, yeah. She likes super. farming. Yes. Why, why did she want to learn uh, the skill of farming, Mikey? Because in case she was exiled, because in all the endings of the game, she's either exiled or murdered. Mm-hmm. She uh, wants to, if she was exiled, she wanted to make sure she had a skill so she could make some money. Isn't that fucking practical? <laughs> that's a great idea it's like mm, just in case i need to learn how to make money and to eat mm. and carry a small toy snake in my pocket just in case well yes because one of uh one of the death routes is uh, the handsome prince kills her i think by accident yeah. or something like that so it's like the, well, handsome ki- mm? the, the handsome prince who is awful in the original version of the game yes well. he, yes like which is which is something i basically Something I love about this is by episode three, she's technically stopped the game from happening. Oh, yeah. She's become the main heroine and she doesn't she, realize it. Yeah, she doesn't get it. No. And like all the characters who are go- who they are going to be in the game is not who these people become. Yeah, it's really uplifting. <laughs> be- because she and it's not just like she's helping people for a selfish reason. She's a genuinely nice person mm-hmm. who's on some sort of drug. Yes. But and she just she has been so sincerely kind to people that their whole lives have been altered for the everyone around her is altered for the better. Yeah, even the 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 mum uh says that uh, begrudgingly she goes <laughs> she went from a spoiled brat hit in the head to now becoming a troublemaker. Yeah. Uh and then Tr- the, and the the maid says something like Tom the gardener, the 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 cook and her have all opened up and become a lot happier since that happened and it's like oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. As she's plowing a field in the back garden, going, Hey! Ha! <laughs> and the mother goes out screaming, Stop going hey and who? As it's not very ladylike at all. Yeah, no, no. Um, and her her magic power is Earth Bump. Yes, yeah, where, where a little lump uh, kind of comes out of the earth for no particular yeah. reason. She does use it effectively. Yeah, that one time, yes. 
I don't know how that's a magic power, though. It seems really lame. I don't know yeah, why but... anyone would be sent to a magic school if they could make a tiny lump appear from the ground. Yeah, I am curious. I think it's kind of like, like, well, she has to go. Yeah, it's probably a rich person thing as well. Like, she has yeah. magic, she has nobility, she probably has to go. Yeah. <laughs> I really like this show. It's joyous. It's, it's absolutely yeah. joyous. Um, I really, like, I based, yeah, I did the, I watched it all in a day. Had you heard um, of it before I mentioned it to you? I had, and I'd seen trailers, but I had, I was interpreting it as something very different. Were you just seeing it as, like, um, a love show or something like that? Or, like, a, like I only, I, like, I saw bare bones stuff, so I thought it was mm. going to be like, oh, I'm a villain who died who got resurrected as a posh girl. Yeah, yeah. And then I, and then it's, like, going to be a comedy about her being evil. Um... And I, you know, I saw a couple of the art styles and they're just like, oh, it's going to be shoujo stuff. And shoujo stuff can be fun. Sure. It can be good. Um, But a lot of it's crap because it's kind of <laughs> like shonen. Some shonens are good. A lot of them are crap. Mm. And it's it's very difficult to find the good ones. But um, I I got into it so fast. I laughed so much. And oh, like, yeah. It's what, it made me think, like, how many gems have slipped by that I just didn't try? Because uh, yeah. I... I in the last, because I've I've been really lax in the last couple of seasons anyway, so mm -hmm. I'm probably going to do a bit of catch up. See see if there's anything that popped out at me. You know, but... I, I it's weird. I think a good, maybe not a, a great gauge, but not a bad gauge to go by is what people are memeing about. Because if people are making memes about the show, it's mm. probably funny, but it's also garnered the attention of a lot of people who want to do something related to the show. Yeah, doesn't always work, obviously, but you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Super gets memed a lot. Um and stuff like that. So yeah, mm. that's how I, I found out why. about it. I watched a YouTube channel mentioning the memes, and I was like, "Oh, this this sounds fun." And then I tried mm. it and went, "Whoa, this is! I'm so happy watching this. I feel joyful." <laughs> it's so sincere as well. Yes, yeah. Um, that, like so many times that I am pumping my arms in the air, just going "Yeah!" and feeling great. Yeah, something I really like because this like okay, so a sekai obviously have a real problem with trying to make the perfect protagonist. Yes. Um, by making them super powered or super amazing or super charming or whatever. And my god, is it fucking tiresome. And like, I think that's why the ones that stand out the most are the ones that either subvert that or do something horrific to the character. Like, yeah. now Fumi is, is pretty overpowered in, in Rising of the Shield Hero, but he has a really hard start. So yeah, it kind of gets he, you connected he earned that, that way. Yeah. He fucking earned that. Yeah. That's the difference. Then... He, he, we see his trial and error. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Subaru. Where do you even <laughs> fucking start with Subaru? And he's still um, shit. He's got no power. Yeah. His power is I get to die. Woo. I get to I get the reset button. Yeah. Um, but I get to feel like, all the pain again and again every single time. Yeah. yeah. He dies horribly. <laughs> yes, um yeah. that is a very forgiving man. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd be quite I don't think uh, I'd be quite as forgiving in his case. Agreed. But um what it's th this this kind of like genre of die get resurrected as a child and remember that you're from another world. Mm -hmm. This is my least favorite isekai genre. Yeah. Because they all follow the same pattern. Oh, I remember. I'm going to be super special by learning some power or something and be really super strong by the time I'm ten. Yeah. And then everyone will be instantly charmed and I will be perfect. And women will want me and men will want to be me and blah 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 blah. This subverts that completely by mm -hmm. making. You know, the point is not that this person's super powerful. They're not. Just like they had, they just they're knowing that they're remembering their previous life is shit. <laughs> I I gotta I gotta be better. And the fact that they never realize that everyone is falling in love with them yes. makes it more endearing because there's none of the I'm so perfect and cool, but I'm ignoring this person who's in love with me because I'm not at that stage of the game yet. The Which the I really the, the really awkward thing is you know that everybody else knows that everybody else wants her. <laughs> oh, well, Alan and Mary, mm -hmm. who are engaged, yeah, because of course because they have to be. Um, and he Alan accidentally writes a love song for uh Katarina. He doesn't realize he's done it, leading yeah. Mary to go more competition. I'll have to undermine him now to make him think maybe he wrote it about me. Yeah, as she's like mumbling to herself, like biting a fingernail, and uh, like Katarina is going, "Yeah, she must really love Alan to be this concerned." Yeah, this all are like Keith and um, Jared or whatever his name is, Gerald, Gerard. Um, yeah, yeah, and they're like, uh, they're kind of like, "Oh, 
you and me, I won't leave you alone with her for a second and cut to Katarina. They're such good friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she says that like three or four times. It's like, no, no, bitch, they ain't friends. Your little brother's terrified that this this prince is going to fuck you. Yeah, but it's take you very... away from her. Flight problem. Yeah. He will. Yes, yeah. He's very open about the fact that is his plan. Yes, yeah, and she doesn't realise, do you want to come to my room? I've got some very special sweets. It can just be the two of us. Ah, oh, sweets, yeah, I love sweets. And he's like, yeah. And you, just, you see Keith right out of the floor. I will come to the room too. I like sweets too. I will block your penis. <laughs> I am the provisional cock block. <laughs> and, and it's not exactly like he's innocent because like adopted brother, everything is fine, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But uh, here's the question: <laughs> yes. Which one would you go for? Wow, the boys. Mm. Um, because oddly enough, I think they're more attractive than the girls in this. Because the girls, the, they've had more had to much develop. Yeah, they haven't yeah. had much development. I guess like the 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 guy that I think is like the coolest is probably Alan, the pianist. Mm. Like he's 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 got the cool voice. Uh, he he's really good at piano. He's not just out and out, I'm going to fuck you, Katarina. Uh, and he's not the toting little brother, which is a bit incessant uh, in a lot of ways to me. Uh, and the, the, yeah. the silent guy who's just pretty, uh, there's <laughs> nothing to him apart from he's just pretty. I'm like, why would Katarina ever be interested in him? That's, yeah, that's a trophy boy. <laughs> yeah. So Alan, I thought Alan was cool. What about yeah, you, Mikey? I, yeah, Alan. Like yeah. Maybe Nickel is, maybe Nickel just because at least he's not in your face. Like, I guess. He, he doesn't do anything. No. But he doesn't he, smile. He like smiles no. once or twice and that's it. It's like, oh, Or geez. like he's smiling and just like, ah, no one else can see it, Sophia. But yeah, he's grinning. <laughs> is he? Oh, I don't know. There's like but, two yeah, or three I, times where um, yeah. Katarina just looks at him and is like, I don't know what to say. There's awkward <laughs> conversation. What did my grandma <laughs> used to tell me about this? How do I fix this? My grandma for another reality. <laughs> oh man, it's it's joyous. It's utterly joyous. I love shows like this. Yeah, same. Um, and 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 it's so nice and so honest and just so kind. It's a kind show, mm. and yeah, I like how exasperated the poor maid gets, despite the fact she's clearly very fond of her. Oh yeah, totally. Um, I kind of I kind of want Katarina to give her a hug. Yeah, I like. I'm fascinated by that because like one thing we don't really delve into is how people felt about her before. When she was, yeah, when she was the brat. So I'm assuming the maid was more like, "It's my job to mind this person." This yeah, horrible I, child. I, th- I think that the most you get is out of the first episode where you see the maid sigh because she she's complaining she doesn't have the right bow even though she chose it, mm. and she's like, "Ah, oh, fuck, this is my life." <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she's still kind of sighing. Yes, but in a different way. This is like, I don't want to farm. I'm farming. <laughs> I have oh, yeah. I've got a feeling as well because we keep having dream sequences back to mm. uh, her original life and her, uh, her friend. friend. Yeah, I, I, it's it's weird. I keep having feelings that this is a dream and it's not real, and maybe she's oh. in a coma. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, and that's why she keeps recalling stuff, and that's why she's in this world, and mm. why the sister of um, oh, what's Nickel. his name? The Nickel. Nickel, the sister of Nickel, Sophia, Sophia. Sophia, yeah, is acts so much like her best friend apparently. Hmm. I could be wrong, but that's that's the that's the feeling I get. No. It could just be that she is in another world and it's fine, don't worry about <laughs> it. It's fine, don't she, worry she's about She's just remembering stuff. And but, like oh uh, like the bully the bully stuff, um, when she goes to school and meets the main the supposed main heroine. Yes. Which is fantastic because like you're currently, like, not even the most important female side character in this. Yeah, but it's mad. You're, you're, you're the main heroine. Everyone's supposed to love you, and everyone kind of does. But there's very much... Why? <laughs> it's like, oh, every, are you in love with her? Because if you're in love with her, I don't want to say I'll die, but I might die. And and no one's in love with her. Because no. not even she's in love with her, because she's in love with you. Yep. Everyone wants to be with you. In that way, it's it's interesting as well because they all have uh, quite depressing backstories as well, mm. which then Katarina comes around and makes them all happy. Which and like again, it's the sincerity and yeah, like the 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 thing that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, but like they're very just because you know, I I haven't played them, but I know more about them than I do about the girl version. They're very similar to a lot of the background for a Rogue novel, 
um, heroines. Oh, uh, they're kind I, of tropes, are they? Yeah, well, like, they're all like, I was abused. Mm. I was a monster. No one liked me. I look yeah. weird. Like, ev- like visual novels in general, whether you're talking the sexy ones or not, always have these, a lot, they, they, they often have their approach to backstory that's add a lot of tragedy. Mm. So, I really like that how they take this kind of tropey thing, which can be played very, very well. High Steinscape. Um, <laughs> but, and then they just spin it on its head and just like, yeah, but none of that matters now because life is great now. Like, oh, my father abandoned us because he was worried my mother cheated on him because I have magic powers and I'll never make sweets again. She loves sweets. I must make all the sweets. Oh, it, it was really sweet when the mum was just like, thank you for being her friend. I was like, ah, oh, yay. So, the fact <laughs> that a mother side character that we may not even see again got that much in such a short time got that much character development yeah and here good emotional note as well yeah and like also we probably didn't see like maria's face at that time watching her hold on just go like <sighs> oh for me they go I- <laughs> one thing, I, one thing I kind of wished while she was hoeing mm. the field was she was laughing maniacally and having an evil look <laughs> on, her, on her face. Because oh. if she sees a field, she she wants to farm the shit out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she dragged her brother across country in mm-hmm. the skies. Yep. With fake glasses that she doesn't need. No. Nope. <laughs> For no other reason than to look at fields. Yep. So she could <laughs> learn new techniques. Or, like, she's got um, the gardener Tom, like, builds her fake snakes that she mm. then throws at targets. <laughs> Just in case she has to beat the prince, in case she, he pulls a sword on her one day. Yep. Because in the bad ending, he gutted her. That's right. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's, it's it's one thing to see something like Konosuba, which is just sheer joy for very other reasons. Yeah. Or something that, like, oh my god, the story's so deep, and the character's so amazing, blah, blah. What this is just joyful. This is a joyful, wonderful experience, and I recommend it for anyone. Agreed. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. And Katarina is an amazing protagonist, and <laughs> I, 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 Jai sort of said, ooh, could you stick her in the Sekai Quartet? And I was just like, she couldn't handle it. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know what would happen because then would all the characters in the Isekai Quartet fall in love with her as well? Oh my god! Because that... that could be incredibly awkward if the entire school falls in love with her. And she's just like, man, they're all such good friends. What you need is like Subaru is kind of like really nice to her, mm-hmm. and there's just the one person who doesn't fall in love with him with her is this wonderful blue Oni girl, <laughs> who's just like slowly becoming more yandere. <laughs> God like damn that, it. that, that would be Subaru. good. Yes. <laughs> Super Super Kun. Super Kun. That's, That's right. You. What? I kill her. What? It's Somebody fine. Kill someone. I yeah, have an ace. <laughs> yeah, it is it is weird. I, I don't it could work in the Isekai quartet, but it I don't in a lot of ways it I, it doesn't look it, maybe it would work as background stuff as like cameos, mm, but not as like yeah. main appearance. The the thing is the Isekai thing <laughs> it's not super important. Like, the no. world itself is not otherworldly. Like like you said, magic is actually a very small part of this. Like, yeah. there are no giant dragons flying around. No one's tossing fireballs. No. Um, there's minor healing spells, and you can catch fire and make an earth bump. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, it's a very normal world. It's a normal Victorian story. Yeah. Like, it's like, a, like Violet Evergarden was a bit like that as well. Like, yeah, yeah, I can it, see that. Like, that had, oh, look, she's got robot arms. But the story's very Victorian. Yeah, apart from the incredible technological uh, new robot arms, there wasn't much else that was, Mm. like, out of... Like, something that couldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, she was... It was sort of like, what? Less Victorian era, more like World War I kind of stuff. Mm, And, like... The, it, and then she went to like high high end rural England at the yes. time, which was still rather Victorian. Yeah. Um. But sort of the last gasp of it, really. But um, no, nah, I I love it. Yeah, same. Uh, the only problem is we gotta. I've got to wake week by week now. I can't watch yeah. six episodes in one day. <laughs> uh, I've got a feeling it'll probably from the the looks of things it'll probably be a twelve to thirteen episode show. From what I understand, because I did a little research, oh. the, the the 
there's multiple n arcs, but m most people would say the main story ends in the second volume. Oh, okay, so interesting. I'm hoping we'll get a proper ending. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. As long as that, we don't what, get a stupid cliffhanger or something. Yeah, what I, <laughs> what I was reading was that at the after volume, like volume two was clearly at the end, and then they became popular. And then, oh man, bummer. And then it just sort of continued on. Right. Yeah. And, we, and a we, lot of people feel we, that the story gets recycled a bit. Ah, uh, so it don't, it kind of overstays its its welcome in a in a lot of ways. I could see that. Yeah. Right. So, if we only get the first two volumes adapted into the anime, I would be very comfortable with that. Mm. If the, if this does have a proper ending, or a proper intended ending, perfect. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason. I mean, there. I I understand the reason for extending your show to make more money and and all that jazz. But if you can have a good focused story experience, that that's mm. sometimes better. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. That's all I've been those, up to this week, Mikey. Those bully girls are terrified of her. <laughs> she, because she has the scary face of a villainess. <laughs> but she does it most of the time. <laughs> Not most of the time, but she does pull it down when she has to. Yeah. Uh, she used the power of... She was very proud of her earth bump. She was. Well, it, it saved um, Maria. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's it, Mikey. We do have a question from Christoph uh, Carlson, mm -hmm. who sends us it via the Moonbase 2 facebook page uh he also shows off the shin godzilla uh, magic the gathering card if you're aware of it mr w yes, uh, mikey i saw that are you tempted to just get like the godzilla cards and just put them maybe in the a binder i would be tempted i mean probably i don't not know how for... obviously how much they are yeah, individually or anything not not cheap oh, um bummer. so i would be tempted if i could again it's kind of like oh i'd be tempted if i could find it for a price i like hmm is it like, because you know more about Magic the Gathering than I? Is it one of relatively. those relatively? <laughs> relatively, yeah. Is it one of those things where even though the limited, if you wait a few years, they'll drop in price, or is it because the limited, they'll go up in price, or the is likely, it harder to tell? It's harder to tell with this kind of stuff from what I've seen. Right, because like usually it's oh here's a limited playable card, mm -hmm. or here's a limited and uh, neither playable, but they're you know they're they're these are these are exclusives. Like, that Grimlock card went up a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh. I was going to get the set for a friend who was big into magic and was having a birthday, and I was just like, oh, I'll get him this. It's a weird exclusive thing. He, thought, he knows nothing about Transformers, but... Um, and I was just like, oh, no, I don't like you that much. How, how much was it, if you don't mind me asking? Um, for the tree card, I think it was 120 Whoa, whoa, that did go up in price. God damn, because yeah. wasn't it like, like 30, 30 40 Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At, the, at the actual con, it has con. Holy crap, that um, did go up, Jesus. So I, honestly, I would expect these things to go up, not down. Right, wow. Um. Yeah, like, the fact that there's no original dialogue on, some, on them or anything might make more of a difference, because you're paying for the art. Mm. So it might be a case they don't go up as much, but I wouldn't put money down on that. Okay. Right. Well, uh, the question uh, he le uh, leaves us is out of curious, uh, out of curiosity, how f uh, how did you guys get into Sailor Moon? Did you get to the how far did you get in Sailor Moon? Did you get to the part? Obviously, the spoilers for the original show. Did you get to the part where they all die in the original and was not edited out of the Scandinavian and Latino dubs, uh, making a watershed moment for a young fan like me. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, no, I I saw the edited, the heavily edited Fox Kids dub, which did not have them all dying. I didn't actually know they did. No, me neither. I you I, haven't spoiled anything for me, by the way. But I I wasn't no, aware. This is, <laughs> this is a very old show. I'm I'm not particularly mm. first. So, uh, I, how far did you get through the show? Because I I didn't watch a huge amount of it myself. I, used I watched to, bits. They've... It used to air alongside a few animes and stuff, and I used to watch it then. Yeah, me uh, too, but, but it wasn't I like something I, I minded like, missing. I don't remember it. I've had, this is... Uh, oh my god, he doesn't remember enough of an anime. But I don't remember <laughs> enough of Sailor Moon to tell you how far I... I, I probably saw the whole dub run that was on Fox Kids at the time. Whether that was 25 episodes or 125, I can't tell you. I don't think I we probably... got a lot, did we? Because no. I, I, I don't think we even got the whole... We might have, but I, I feel we didn't get the entire thing. Because mm. I know we got like, a movie. I, I remember watching this, and then like you'd have Flint the Time Detective on after it or something. Oh God! Oh God! Um, <laughs> yeah. Um. The hey, the Poke Wars. But um. 
I mean, I remember there was a girl, there was a little girl who, from, I don't know, I, I know a little bit about the fiction whereby there's something very complicated going on with her. Right. Um, I remember she came in and then she left. And there were, there was another, they added in a couple of extra scouts as well. I remember that. Yeah. And that's as clear as it is to me. So I'm not really 100% sure. Okay. I think I got near the, the like, tuxedo mass introduction or, like, near the end of the first 12 episodes, maybe. I, I really mm. didn't get that far in it myself. Uh, also, are you uh, ready for Optimus Prime and Soundwave becoming uh, fashion icons in this new era of face coverings? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, because motherfuckers with 3D printers have already started making plans. Uh, he also gives um, a thum- thumbs up recommendation to the Gundam Astray manga, uh, if you were wondering, ah, Mr. Mikey. Interesting. I hadn't actually considered looking into the manga. Because mm. um, I knew the manga very much like the shows. It's very up and down. Yeah. <laughs> there's an Astray short I was going to watch. Mm hmm. Um, but no, I'll, I'll check that out. Um, I don't remember the question now. <laughs> uh, are, are you prepared for the, or, or were you prepared for the Optimus Prime and Soundwave, um, masks, the PPEs? Um, probably not. But then again, I'm not shocked by them. Um, no. I think it's like, I'll be honest. Like if you can have some fun with what's going on right now, do it. I, it feels it feels kind of gross as well, you know, hmm. to, for people to be selling like customed ones and stuff like that. Like I understand having having fun with it and all, but it it hmm. feels like profiting from this kind of stuff. Well, from, I would also say like stuff. if if someone if your only way of getting these masks is getting one of these custom ones, uh, then kick someone in the dick and steal the fucking thing. Yeah. But um, like if it's just hey, you you can get your masks normally, but do you want to have a laugh? Hmm. That, that I'm not bothered with. Sure. Um, but yeah, if someone's just bloody sharking off it, um, <laughs> beat the shit out of them. Boom. Some uh, people I... are going to say, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not. No, Mikey isn't the killer. <laughs> He's a ticker. <laughs> Meow. That's right. He bounces. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything else uh, this week, Mr. Mikey, unless you've got uh, any no. questions or anything like that. Uh, nope. Uh, not this week. Uh, uh, no. Um, sorry, I was just I was scrolling through live chat, which is my anime tracking website, and I just oh. stopped on Hayaku stop motion anime. Oh, stop okay. motion anime. It's an OVA, a ten episode OVA stop motion thing. Huh. Might might check that out. But um, no, that is me for the week. Um. Yeah, just let people know that there is a Cyberverse special coming out in the next week or two. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, we got your interview the... up as well for, uh, yep. from Cyberverse um, that went up this week. From Cyberverse, yeah. The interview with Maycat went up on Patreon and the public re- release should be out this week. That's right, yes. Yep, so keep an eye on that. Like, genuinely, uh, we always like have to sell what we're doing, but I really enjoyed that interview. May's really fun. She probably will be on another show or two at some point. Because um, she hates she... you. Because she hates me, but loves G.I. Joe. Uh, <laughs> to a scary degree. Oh, wow. Specifically okay. Cobra Commander. I think she's in love with you. Not not me. Which is probably go. No, no, you. Oh, okay. Like, she calls you out several times for being fantastic. <laughs> a uh, bad judge of character, I see. <laughs> exactly. Her fiancé will probably object. Okay, yes, but yeah. But she can't do anything. She's in California. What's she going to do? She burst, into, <laughs> burst into your house. My fiancé is interested in you because you have a Cobra Commander thing and she's obsessed. I challenge you to a duel. Oh, she think... slapped me with a white glove. <laughs> oh dear, but it's, it's, I don't know. Did he, these days, if she slapped you with a white glove, you'd ask her to disinfect it. That's eh, um... fine. I'll disinfect myself. <laughs> Get the bleach and just dance in the rain. Right. So you're not allowed outside. But <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. We owe ye a woo woo or two. We do. Uh, yes. We had one planned, but it didn't quite work out the way we hoped. Mm-hmm. Um. So. I have a couple of I I said I said true a few ideas at Andy. Yes. I don't know which one of those are going to take off, and I don't know if you've got any yourself. Oh, I finished. Yeah, uh, you mentioned uh, woo woo, and that reminded mm-hmm. me uh, that I finished Final Fantasy VII remake this week because. Ah. We want to do a woo-woo on it, but we want to do it mm. with Mr. George, and we'll kind of 
uh, waiting for him to finish. Oh, we're we're at this weird stage. We don't know whether we should do it just me and Mikey. Uh, mm. I I feel it would be nice to have someone else on there. Um, and George is a, a, a an eloquent individual, shall we say? <laughs> uh, so it, it'd be good to to have that because I think he'd have an interesting take on it as well. Yeah, because um, that that not, game deserves discussion. Yes, there is much to talk about. Yes, I I will say briefly. Um, you were completely happy with the ending. I Loved was it. concerned. I felt the si- mm. <laughs> I felt the exact same concern I felt when I originally heard that they were doing a remake of the game. I was mm. like, oh, this could go well, or this could go really badly. <laughs> because the reason I fa- I I'm ten- I'm tentative about it is because I go, hey, Mikey, Kingdom mm. Hearts. Not mm. my problem. No, no, <laughs> I no, don't deal with Kingdom Hearts. It's not your problem, but that's that's the kind of stuff that we could be delving into with the the, the Final Fantasy VII True. stuff. Like one and thing I'm very concerning. glad of is that I never got into Kingdom Hearts. Oh I, God, yeah, Jesus! I, I, you would not want to be a Kingdom Hearts fan either. If like you you said, oh, <laughs> it's silly that there's courses at universities for Gundams. I wouldn't be surprised if there were courses at university for um. Kingdom Hearts, just to explain what's going on. <laughs> I've watched multiple like things on YouTube before, which is like, this is the story of Kingdom Hearts, and they're, they're at least an hour long, if not more. Mm. At least. It's a fucking mess. It's not that fun to play, either. Is it not? I, I have a feeling that they took a lot of the combat elements... F- well, no, because the action director was the uh, same guy who did Seven, I heard. Is that not was right? Was it? I think he came over from it. I did not know that. I could be wrong, but I think I heard somewhere that um, it was the same guy or he had a hand in it, which would make sense because mm. it's kind of running around smashing the, the X button kind of thing. But then obviously with a yeah. bit more RPG elements in there as well. So I wouldn't be I heard, like I heard people really weren't into the, the combat for, was it three? I probably, yeah. Yeah. Um... Don't know. I mean, I, I don't. Know. Anytime I've played a Kingdom Hearts game, I've lost interest in under five minutes. So. I played the I played the first one and got up to Tarzan's world and went eh, and it stopped. Oh, see, you say that now, I'm thinking like I remember the Tarzan game on the PlayStation. Oh no, you were sliding down, shut. Was it was that like faux 3D as well? No, like it, was, it wasn't it, proper three D, but it was kind of three D. It, it had, I was like, I would say it's more faux cell shading. Okay, right. Because you'd have semi three D moments where you were like sliding down tree branches and stuff. Yeah, but the backgrounds were all two D, weren't they, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought I thought it was something like, like that. Man, the, do you remember how that ba- <laughs> the bad guy dies in that? No, actually, I don't. He gets hung. He's hung in 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 vines. Oh yeah! And you see the silhouette of like this hung body. Yeah, Disney. It's, it's like, oh, Jesus, Jesus! You would get away with that now. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> anyway. I don't. Ah, well, it's all CG now. You never get away with it. You can get <laughs> yeah. Away, genuinely, like you wouldn't get away with Titan AE now. I don't. I don't like Titan AE that much, but you wouldn't get away with it. Some, some of it's visual. There'll be some people out there that are like, what the fuck's Titan A? I saw Titan A at the cinema, but remember nothing about it. Nothing. I, if, I, if I hadn't seen a review of it a couple of years ago, I wouldn't remember much. Mm-hmm. And then it all came back to me. And I was just Good like... Good things? No, God, no. Oh. Um, everyone going like, it's an amazing film, look at the visuals. And the visuals were fine for the day. The story is kind of trash. Oh, damn. <laughs> so... Hot takes from um, young Mikey. Goddamn. <laughs> uh, well, that's it. That's us done for the show this week, everybody. Thanks for, for joining us once again. Mikey, where can people find you on the internet if you want them to? Uh, you can tweet me on Irish Paleo. You can send us a tweet on the Moonbase 2. If you want us to leave us any feedback, there's Facebook. There's our email, Moonbase 2 at gmail.com. There is Libsyn. There is Twitter. There is other places, Weebly and everywhere else. Um... Yeah, and keep, you know, we, we love having stuff to answer. We love having things. Recommend Gundam stuff to me if you want. Recommend other model kits for me to build. That you mean non-traditional Gundam. Gundam stuff? Yeah. Yeah, like stuff that is, is different, that would be interesting for a beginner. You still need to try a mini plow. Yes, I do need, but, oh dear, which one? Well, like, the problem with mini plows, I want them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, like, which one? All of them. 
<laughs> all of them. You sh- I, like the I, only, I, the only I one was... I wouldn't, the only one I wouldn't really want is the uh, the watch me call Gridman Superform. Okay. Like okay. Gridman, yes. The suit I've never, I don't like how it's the 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 the. the I don't like how it looks in the the mini plot. Like the proportions are all off. I can see that. I don't mind it myself, but yeah, I, I can see the the criticism there. I'd, I'd say then, for you specifically, I think it would be wise for either to wait for the re-release or go on Mandarake and get uh, Genesic. Mm. I, I saw it on there for cheap, but the shipping is a bitch at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's the, um, that's the problem with anything that we want at the moment, because 90% of it comes from Japan and it's just not feasible. Yeah, yeah yep, yep, yep. Um... Ten Ryujin was up there as well, and I finally realized how they did Ten Ryujin. And yes, I think we talked like, about that last week, didn't we? Yeah, like it's we. It's one of those things where not how I'd love them to do it, but we. Re- it's very understandable why they did it the way they did it. Do you remember what the the general prices on her uh, them she were? She was more expensive. I think it was about eight thousand yen. That's yeah, that's about right because she was an exclusive. So yeah, yeah, it's and, annoying yeah, but makes um, sense. Yeah, she's a bit. She's dearer than Genesig. Genesic was six thousand. Um, I I think that's because Genesic's been out longer, and she's probably a bit newer in a in a sense, mm. if you know what I mean. Or maybe she's just yeah, rarer. Yeah. I don't know. I she must be an she's an exclusive, and Genesic Definitely. wasn't. I suppose. No, no, Genesic was an exclusive. I think. I'm pretty oh, sure it was. I don't. Yeah. I mean, there's also like the the Sentai stuff, but which one of yes. those would? It... Yeah. Yeah, there are definitely some of the Sentai ones I'd like to pick up as well. Mm. Yeah, right. But uh, if you want, you can find me on Twitter, cctfw, YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find the, us on the Moonbase Two forums, Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Libsyn, like Mikey said. Uh, you can head over to the Patreon uh, page, which is patreoncom slash moonbase 2 two dollars each month. Uh, the extended version of From the Files of Teletron Two, and it's a week early usually. Uh, you get interviews a week early as well, and you get the Moonbase woo woo. Uh, and you can head over to YouTube uh, for Movies 2 Transformers podcast. We're there. And you can head over to ccbunker.weebly.com. <laughs> ccbunker.weebly.com uh, and that's where I'll put up other stuff as well. Because I did a podcast with Mr. Gruff this week as well, where we talked about the book, or for me, audiobook of uh, Dark Harvest from the set in the Warhammer world, which was a lot mm. of fun. It's a good horror book. It's good stuff. So, thank you, Mikey, for joining me this week. It's been fun, fun times. Thank you all for having me. And by next week, uh, B and A will be done for me. Uh, so I've got a few more days. Well, I, the bummer thing is, I'll be finished that by like uh, Saturday, I think. You could watch um Dropkick Devil. That's the plan. I've got that downloaded. I'll hope I'll enjoy that because from that one clip that you put on Twitter, I was like, this seems stupid. I like it. What uh, little I've seen of it, it is definitely on the stupid side. The the clip for those wondering was a snake looking demon girl, uh, who mm. was annoyed that people were trolling her on Twitter, and so she got revenge by pieing them in the face. Globally. <laughs> globally, globally pieing them in the face and saying hi and ni hao and bonjour, but in like <laughs> really adorable Japanese attempts but, of the the accents. And, and each pie got better every time. Yeah, <laughs> like people were kind of enjoying it by the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was great. I was like, okay, I'm, 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 this seems fun and interesting. I'm, <laughs> I'm on board. Mm. So I might be able to report on you next week uh, if I enjoyed that or not, as I, I'll probably have started it. But until then, everybody, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week for more stuff. If there's actually any news next week. Who knows? Are you the villain of your own story? I'm the mustache council member. <laughs> Fuck off, you are not! <laughs>